Today marks day 41 of the Grape Fast. I've been doing this since I think October 3rd or October 2nd, something like that. It was a uh, day after my family left. They visited us for a week and the next day I decided to start a Grape Fast and I had no intention of really going 40 days. In my experience with different fasts, I found that you know the best thing is to take it day by day. You know, if, if you're on day one and you know you're doing a 40 day or a 60 day or a 90 day uh, fast of whatever kind, then it's possible just to get overwhelmed in that, uh, that inability to, to go forth and to see through what you want to see. If you haven't developed that kind of skill, then the overwhelm can cause you to fail or can cause you to succumb to desire. So in all of my experience, um, I've just found that what works best for me and you know really has led to, to long-term success whether it's fasting or diet eating cleaner is simply this notion of living day to day so I started on day one and I said I'm gonna try to do like three day fast which didn't seem too much and three turned into seven and ten and uh, I just kept going and you know really I'd say the first like 20 days were the hardest in the sense that it's like wow I'm not gonna eat this or I'm not gonna have that you know uh, for another 20 days or 30 days that that's kind of hard but that's why you gotta kind of you know bring it all back draw it into you and kind of separate yourself from the future and instead become present you know really if there's anything I could say that um, fasting teaches you um, it's really the art of being present you know with whatever you're eating with whatever's going on in your life with time you know, it's just this sense of when we're completely in the moment and we're not worried about the future, then it doesn't matter if it's 40 days, if it's 10 days, or if it's a thousand days. All that matters is this day right now. Draw it in even closer, all that matters is this meal right now, nothing else. So really, fasting is kind of in a way about purifying the mind and purifying um, our consciousness, if you will. You know, obviously we're doing something on a physical level, but the physical level is the most gross manifestation of our experience. So we start there, we start by fasting, we start by not consuming a particular food or only eating a certain food for an extended period of time and that's setting the, you know, it's like throwing the stone into the pond. That's what initially sets off the vibration, the uh, butterfly effect into the other sheaths of our being. So. You know, you accept this challenge and then what happens is slowly it starts trickling into the other areas of your experience, you know, your mental, your psychological, your spiritual, and then you're forced to cleanse those parts, you know, things come to the surface, emotions, desires, it's all a purification process initiated by an experience on the, the grossest level of, you know, the 3D, of the physical, of um, what we eat and what we put into our mouth. So. Yeah, it's been a very purifying experience. You know, I really did not think I could do 40 days. Uh, the longest fast I ever did was 36 days, so I beat it by a couple days. Not that it was about that. Um, you know, the, the thing to keep in mind also is uh, not letting your ego get out of control. You know, it, it may be the ego in one that wants to go 10 days and sees themselves as a failure when they've only gone nine days. It's the ego in you when you say you're gonna do a 40 day fast and you only do a 20 day fast and you beat yourself up for the coming weeks because you didn't have the strength or the determination or the willpower to make it to 40 days. Those are all really deceptions and you know veils that the, the ego uses to entrap us further and deeper. You know, they're, they're, the ego inside of me wants to fast another two days so I could say six weeks. I ate grapes for six weeks, or if I'm giving a talk or a presentation, I could say, well, I ate grapes for six weeks, as if there's some kind of like trophy involved in that. The ego wants to accumulate those trophies, you know? Um, so the, the part of us that is more grounded and balanced in self, you know, the true self, our highest self, that's the part of us that has to pull us back into the reality that anything we do, any experience, any um, any moment where we put our higher self before our ego is a win. You know, that's, that's accumulating points, if you will, for our highest self. So, 
yeah, I could go two more days, but the higher self inside of me says, no, you don't need to go two days. You've done enough. Let go, detach, be compassionate towards yourself, and really celebrate what you've done because it's an extremely powerful um, healing and therapeutic experience. So, yeah, you know, 41 days, 40 days, it's all good. I feel like I made what I wanted to do, and really I've achieved a lot of what I wanted to achieve. And really that was kind of um, many different things, but really one of the, the biggest being that um, we seek to get so much of our emotional comfort and our psychological comfort and our physical comfort even from uh, what we eat. So. We got UPS here. Okay, let's see what I got here. I just ordered, got a book that I ordered on Amazon. Understanding the Birth Chart, a comprehensive guide to classical interpretation by Kevin Burke. Astrology book. I read a bunch of it on uh, Google Books and it kind of hit a chord. This is actually the book they use on the introductory courses at uh, Kepler College, which is one of the largest institutions for astrological certification. But anyway, back on point. Um, one of the things that we all have to confront to a certain degree or another is this feeling of being satiated. You know, we all have this kind of void that we're trying to fill, or so we feel whole. And we've been trained by our society, by culture, by the media, by friends, by really everything that the main way to, to seek that nourishment, to fill that void that we're feeling deep inside of us is through the consumption of foods. So we eat foods that are very sweet, that are very salty, that are unhealthy for us, that are really um, a scientific uh, cacophony of you know flavors and experiences and food scientists have put all their effort and their money because we eat these foods that they, they give us nothing except taste. They satisfy the taste buds. And you know, even when you're eating healthy, I found, you know, over the years transitioning to a plant-based diet, high raw, you know, mostly fruit, I found that even within that world, I try to satiate my emotions and my inner yearnings, if you will, soul yearnings through food. So maybe it's through salads, maybe it's through mangoes, maybe it's through eating a bunch of bananas. And I think at a certain point, we have to kind of learn that we're never going to get that complete uh, soul level nourishment from the external world. We're not going to get it from what we eat, whether we're eating a Big Mac or we're eating a, a Big Mango. It's, you know, in a way we're drawing pleasure from the external world. There's absolutely something to be said about experiencing pleasure and, you know, enjoying the tastes of the material world, but it's another one that becomes our, way, our main source of nourishment for the soul. So for me, this was an experience in like, you know, okay, I'm eating the same food for 40 days or I'm eating the same food for however long. Um, I'm not gonna be able to eat A, B, C, and D. So then you kind of go into this mode of, oh, whoa, what am I gonna do? That's, I need these things. And you start having to confront on an emotional and psychological level, even a philosophical level, what is the impact in the place of food in my life and in comfort? You know, where do I get my comfort from? So. You know, there's other ways, there's spirituality, there's through career, socializing, our relationships, activity, exercise, yoga, you know, uh, meditation, you know, qigong, whatever it is that we choose to do that nourishes us. So, you know, I, I found that, you know, through this experience, I was getting a lot of nourishment, A, through meditation, which I've been practicing for, for several years now. Um, which is always a source of nourishment for me, but ever more so when you're in the middle of a fast because it reminds you that you're not your body and that you are something greater and that your body may have needs, but the needs of your body aren't necessarily the needs of your emotions or of your psychology. Um, so it helps to detach, it helps you to really put things into perspective. And secondly, I got a lot of nourishment uh, through, creativity, through creative expression. I spent a lot of time really solidifying ideas and establishing goals and committing myself really even deeper to uh, Samboda Lifestyle and Wellness, which is my, you know, my personal business that I'm developing. Um, so I've really put a lot of effort into that and I've seen tangible results. You know, when we eat food, 
we feel a certain way and really what we're looking for is that feeling. The food is really just a vehicle to get us to that feeling. And it's been the same with, you know, this uh, creative expression that I've really been putting myself into. It's, you know, some boat of lifestyle and wellness and all the things that I've done are really just a vehicle for me to experience the same thing that we're trying to experience when we eat particular foods or the emotions we try to achieve through our food. And that's really uh, the sense of nourishment, the sense of being fulfilled, of feeling whole, complete, you know. So really this whole thing has been an experience in exploring deeper aspects of the human experience beyond food and exploring the other side of food. What is it that we're trying to create emotionally and psychologically and spiritually and how do I attain that from other sources? Really that's what fasting is about. Fasting is about the, the momentary release of nourishment from food and more into nourishment from the other aspects of our life. It's a practice in learning how to live a holistic holistic life, how to achieve balance. And that may not be the case for everyone, you know, that's just been the case for me with fasting. And one more thing to add is it's not to say that I haven't enjoyed the grapes. You know, I've really come to appreciate <laughs> the the taste on all levels of grapes, the smell, the taste, the texture, the crunchiness, the 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 taste of a grape and the, the feeling of a grape in the mouth when you peel the skin off of it with your teeth. You know, really, if you're only in that single food, you know, talk about mindful eating, completely immerse yourself in the experience of whatever it is that you're consuming. Um, I've enjoyed the grapes, they've tasted good, it's some, sometimes they've been lower quality, but you know, I try to experience and enjoy as much as I can of that grape, knowing that when I do get a, you know, a, a high quality grape, it's going to be like divinity in my mouth, you know, so really, in every moment, we could see everything as a challenge, you know, this grape is bad, or this grape is soft, or this grape doesn't taste good, or this avocado has a brown spot, or maybe this mango has, you know, a rotten section on it, you know, really that's just how things are we choose how we want to react to that or if we want to react or instead see the positive in everything you know and of course I have challenges with this I'm a human being I'm working on it but um, eating the same food for an extended period of time or even if you're not doing that just becoming more mindful of what's going into your mouth you know trying to, to merge with the experience you know really looking at it feeling it tasting it breathing in between bites you know so you're not breathing the food instead you're breathing air so that when you do put the food in your mouth you can more pleasantly experience it so really there's just so many different things um, that can be gained from from these experiences you don't need to do 40 days you know uh, I think fasting is one of those things you work up to it's kind of um, it's something that you know it's a skill if you will that you build inside of yourself sure you could go from eating the standard American diet to then doing a 40-day water fast or 40-day lemon fast but that might not be the healthiest thing you have to develop the, the, the spiritual and psychological and mental strength to, to go through ever deepening lessons that are being communicated to you through the purification experience that one has on a fast so you know depending on where you are the, the fast or the, the cleanse or the detox program you do is going to be different and that's kind of where either you can do the research yourself, reading books, part you know, joining websites, groups, email newsletters, tuning into different um, you know, um, personalities within whatever it is you want to do and the other way is to, to find a credible individual that you feel uh, knows something a little more than you and then that could help you you know I've done that many times on my quest I mean there's always uh, guides out there for us and sometimes it's not a bad thing to, to seek support you know really that's kinda how the world goes around and that's really sort of the art of personal development so yeah, you know, if you have any questions about what kind of fast might be best for you or how long to do it or, you know, what to what to eat or what not to eat, any of that kind of stuff, just post your comments below the video and we'll get a little discussion going about it and uh, provide you some support. So, 
I've been eating the same food for 40 days and I'm wondering, have I purged myself spiritually enough? Have I said what I want to say to really dive into these succulent persimmons? I went to the uh, Asian store a little while ago and persimmons are just, they have cases and cases of them, but none of them were ripe. So I spent about 20 minutes searching and searching and I found two ripe persimmons. I mean, these things are falling apart. They're a little bashed up, but you can see my finger goes right into it. Squishy. That's a ripe persimmon. If it's not squishy like that, you're going to have a chalky tasting experience and you're going to think that persimmons are the worst fruit on the planet. I've actually, a few years ago, I ate a completely unripe persimmon. I had no idea what a persimmon should taste like or feel like when it's ripe and ate the persimmon, it was absolutely horrible. It was so astringent, chalky, my mouth was dry for like an hour, I had this nasty flavor, you know, and that's just really knowing what a ripe fruit is all about. So, found some ripe persimmons, and my mouth is starting to water, and my mind is watering at the thought of eating these. It's hard to imagine that I haven't, I mean these, you know, I've just started purchasing some stuff for the day, and it was like, whoa, I've only purchased grapes for, 40 days, I spent hundreds of dollars on grapes, and it was just kind of strange to step back and say, whoa, I'm about to buy something other than grapes. Welcome back to the, to the normal world. And I'm sure my girlfriend Gina is pumped to uh, eat together again and make some of our awesome raw treats and our different meals and our wraps and salads and all that good stuff. But yeah, I invite you, you know, that's, that's what I want to end on. I invite you, the viewer, my friends, my family, strangers, you know, whoever you are, wherever you are, in some way having been brought to this video, I invite you to explore the idea of fasting in the context of your life and the idea of purifying all aspects of your body. There's a place for purifying the physical, you know. We, it's hard to go into the deeper realms of healing if you haven't confronted the most gross realm, which is our physical experience. And we experience this physical world through this body that we've been given. So really, to me, the first level of healing when you're going from the outside in is the body. And the way that we heal the body and the way that we take the outside world in and create this vessel is through what we choose to put into our mouth. First realize, realize you have a choice. Once you've realized that you have a choice and that this body is essentially your painting, it's your masterpiece, you make it what you want with what brushes you use, what foods you eat, if you will. So start there. Start confronting the deeper aspects of your experience, of your being through your physicalness, through the physical experience. And you do that by confronting what goes into your mouth. So I, I warmly invite you to, to question your diet, question what you're eating. You know, we all know to a certain degree or another what we should be eating or what more we could be eating um, or what, what isn't necessarily the best thing for us, the non-nourishing habits that we're participating in. So, you know, start, start questioning these aspects of your experience and say, well, where is there room for improvement? What can I change? Maybe these oats that, you know, don't make me feel so well, uh, but I've been eating them because they're supposed to be healthy. Well, forget about what you've been told. Forget about what everyone has ever said. Forget about what every health magazine and every health food store says. How do you feel? What is your response to that food? You don't feel well when you eat oats. They bloat you. You feel like tired and lethargic. Maybe you should do a fast where for two weeks you don't eat oats. For a week you don't eat oats. You know, start deconstructing the way, the relationship you have with your food, with, with this way that we take the external world in. Start deconstructing that and looking for opportunities in ways that you can make it a, a more healthy experience because you know what you need to do. Your body is always communicating to you in every single moment there is always a channel of communication. So begin opening up, begin tuning in, listen to your body, listen to your mind. It's all connected, it's all communicating to you always. And when we tune into those communications, when we listen to the subtle vibrations of our experience and of our body, we can then enter into more, uh, the, we can enter into the depths of healing our experience, bringing unity into our life. You know, really that's what yoga is about. Whether it's the yoga of eating or the yoga, you know, yoga that you do at the studio or the mindful 
mindfulness practices. It's all about achieving unity and harmony in our experience. You know, I was thinking about this earlier, you know, what does health mean to me? And I realized that for me, health truly is about uniting mind, body, and spirit. You know, that's what it comes down to. And mind, body, and spirit. Body is part of that. So coming and making peace with our body, making peace with what we eat, letting go of the things that aren't serving our highest good any longer, letting go of the foods that aren't serving our highest good any longer. You know, it's really about purifying, cleansing, cleansing out the depths of our spirit, of our body, of our mind, and purging that out. You know, just like we purge out mucus and we purge out toxins and give uh, liver stones and gallstones and these tangible things, mucoid plaque that we could see in the toilet, parasites, we, we purify that all out. Well, we have those kinds of things, but on other levels of spirit, of emotions, of psychology, we need to purify all aspects of our body. And it can, you know, at times it can be in a hard experience, hard experience but it's what's on the other side of that that truly empowers us to, to be a unified human being. So I think on that note, I am going to delve into these persimmons. Okay. Gina's taught me a pretty good way of doing this, where you basically slice it up I mean, how could you not appreciate the intelligence that created this fruit? Look at that. Is that not a sacred form? It's beautiful. And you see the little drips? It's... No. Mm. Mm. that's not a little ray of sunshine, I don't know what is. Then basically you slice the skin, and you just peel it back. Look at that. Wow. Just a little lick. Mm. All right, here it goes. Wow. My God. <laughs> wow. That is good. That is really good. The texture alone was foreign. I've gotten so used to the crunchiness of grapes that to chew on something that's not crunchy and it's kind of soft, it's just like, whoa. Look at this thing. Wow. Mm. Oh my god. So good. Mm. Mm. This is literally Candy. This is candy from God to me. Why doesn't anyone need candy and chocolates and sweets when there's persimmons, ripe persimmons? My God, if you've never had one, you have got to have one. Amazing. Mmm. It's so creamy and rich. And sweet. It's kind of. It reminds me. If I had to put it into standard terms or standard food comparison, 
I would say it almost reminds me of like Jello, but like a firmer Jello, texture-wise. I mean, this thing is falling apart. Mm-hmm. Wow. So good. And we want to deny children of their desire for sweets when God has given us the sweets that the children are desiring, but they don't have the language to express it. This is what children are desiring. This is what we're all desiring when we have sugar cravings. We're, des we're craving the sugar, the pure energy that goes from the sun and ends up in the fruit. That's pure energy. And we need to consume that. And children need to consume that. And there's not enough. Eat only fruit. Eat as much fruit as you can. Eat two meals a day fruit, three meals a day. To get the pure energy of the sun. I mean, this is sunlight in my hand. I mean, have you seen a more vibrant orange in the middle of November? I mean, this thing would stick out like a sore thumb if I threw it on the, the sidewalk. Nobody would know what to think. It's a little alien. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. So yeah, post your comments below, um, reactions, thoughts, you know, what's your experience been with fasting? Have you done different fasts? Have you done different cleanses? You know, tell us about your experience. We'd love to hear. We'd love to get a conversation going. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. You know, I've been shy to make videos, but really what it's all about is helping each other to heal, helping us to, to elevate our experience, to bring more harmony and joy into our lives. And really the way we do that is by conversing and sharing and talking about our different experiences and inspiring each other. And I've been inspired by many individuals. I'm, I'm continuously inspired. And I hope that this video has been inspirational to push you a little bit into the idea of possibly doing you know, one of many different cleanses. So if you have questions about what kind of cleanses to do, the different varieties of them, how long to go for, things like that, post it below. Uh, if you want, you know, a broader audience, then post it on our Facebook page, which is Samboda Lifestyle and Wellness. You can just type facebook.com slash Samboda Lifestyle and Wellness. And uh, let's get the conversation going on there. I think it's time that uh, we all start confronting healing, and we can do that through, our, through what we choose to put in our mouth, as I've discussed in this video. So, yeah, check us out on Facebook, comment below. If you'd like, go to our website, sambodawellness.com. Check it out. You could leave a little uh, message on there or email us, whatever you want. Just explore, and we invite you to uh, communicate with us. We love talking. So share, please. All right. Have a good day. Thank you.